What a lovely Octo late October day. What are you guys doing here on this day? You should be out playing golf or something else. Um, I'm sure you're here because you're really interested in manufacturing. And as Dennis was saying, manufacturing is changing rapidly. We had quite a journey last couple of years. And I'd like to share with you a couple of insights. A little bit looking at the past and looking into what's really hot these days. What are manufacturers, what, what do they want? How do they try to improve their business? How has it gone in the industry globally? So let's take a little review. This is an article from The Economist magazine from 2009. And it was the, the collapse of manufacturing. And we all remember, this was the big crisis, right? Started with a real estate problem in the States and all the financial institutions went bankrupt. And all of a sudden, people were in trouble. Consumers were in trouble. People were not spending anymore, which means they were not buying, which means manufacturers were not manufacturing anymore. So they were in, in, in tr into trouble. And then think about the entire supply chain that we have. Think also about all the transportation logistics guys and so on. They all were impacted as well. So this crisis impacted everybody. Like in, in, in the UK in that year, the industrial production went down 16.4% just in that year. That is an amazing figure. In Germany, car sales was down 40%. You know, Germany is living on car sales. Germany is an automotive country. And think all about the, think about the entire industry just behind that. All the suppliers, all the steel guys, all the chemicals. Think about glue and paint and rubber and plastics and all these kind of things. All the electronics industry going into a car. Everybody was infected. In China, there were kind of 9,000 toy manufacturers those days. Half of them went bankrupt, out of the market. The manufacturing market had huge overproduction those days. Zillions of products were produced, same products those days. And all of a sudden, they weren't bought anymore. So there was huge overproduction. Well, then in the crisis, what did government do? Oh, we all know. They were pumping money into the financial institutions, big time. Did any government put money into manufacturing industry? Rather not. That's good. They didn't do that because it would be the wrong, the wrong way to treat with it, to deal with it. The problem is, how could a government decide which is the right industry to put in or the right manufacturer to put in? Just take an example: General Motors almost went bankrupt as well, as did Ford. So who's going to decide we're saving Ford or we're saving General Motors? And what about all the suppliers linked to those ones, different ones? It is the consumer to decide which one is supposed to survive. It's the consumer to decide which is the best product, which is the one I want and I need. And that's exactly what happened. All of a sudden, manufacturers needed to move away from mass production into more serialized productions. If you're buying a car today, it is your car. It will be unique. You decide the engine, the color, leather seating, sunroof, stereo equipment, airbag, whatever that is. There will hardly be a second car with exactly, this, exactly the 100% same configuration as yours. Which means manufacturers need to be really, really specialized in their inventory management, in their supply chain management, to be able to produce just to your needs. Also, the life cycle of manufacturing products is getting shorter and shorter. If you buy a television set nowadays, it lasts for three, maybe five, six years. In the past, my parents let a TV set for 20 years. That's completely different, and we see that with everything. If manufacturers really want to keep their leading position in the market, they need to innovate all the time, constantly. So some of them really survived. Many of the, of the manufacturers collapsed, as we see it here. But then all of a sudden, in 2012, there was another article in the um, Economist magazine. Wow, what a change. The third industrial revolution. No word about crisis. No word about collapse. So what is this? What is the third industrial revolution? The first industrial revolution was in the 18th century. Actually started in Britain, more or less. It was, putting, it was the, the first mechanization of manufacturing. It was getting all the weavers together in one building, in a cotton mill. All of a sudden starting to produce in a factory, being much more efficient. That was the first one. That was a major step. The ma major step is step. The second industrial revolution. Any guess? 
just 100th anniversary a couple of weeks ago? Henry Ford, exactly. That was the, the automated assembly line. All of a sudden, you were able to produce something on an assembly line. You had specialized workers just doing one task all the time. You could bring down the manufacturing time for a car from nine hours those days to four hours, even those days. That was fantastic. All of a sudden, mass production, production was easy and affordable. The cost of the produced good was coming down significantly. And all of a sudden, customers were able to buy these products much more. And she still had choices. Henry Ford said, you can have my car in any color you like, as long as it's black. So obviously, there was no diversification. It was just one product. And it was produced millions and millions of times. But this is going on right now, these days. Manufacturers coming out of the crisis in 2009 had to think about their overcapacity. They had to think about, how do I have an inventory management that enables me to react to market needs, to change my product rapidly, to have innovation cycles shortly. And they succeeded big time. And we have new trends now, we have new materials. Think about carbon fiber being used much more than steel. Think about aluminium, which is used in many parts. Think about nanotechnology, which now has completely, completely new functionality and, and product behavior, which is completely different what, to what we had in the past. It is the, the industry of the future, or industry 4.0, as some countries call it. Think about digitization. What we see in here, the third industrial rev revolution, is digitization of manufacturing. Think about th 3D printing. All of a sudden, you're able to build something on your need in a very special, specialized way. Whereas in the past, you need to have a big machine and, and a production cycle and the inventory management to certain, certain parts. Now, with 3D printing, you can do things differently. Think about a service engineer somewhere in the desert in Africa with a need to repair something, and he's missing a spare part. So rather than calling the home com uh, company, the headquarters, and saying, I need this special tool, just send it to me because I want to service my customer so that, that he's happy, right now, he's just loading the design that the engineers have, have created of this product to his computer in the desert in Africa. And he has a 3D printer and it's printing it. And next day, he can go to the customer and do that. That is, that is a major change. Which means the workforce is changing as well. If you go to a factory today, you will hardly see too many workers. You will see lots of robots doing the work. And you will see a couple of workers with a little oil can and just oiling the machine. That's what it is. But you need to m have more educated workers, more engineers, highly staffed people, maintaining the entire flow, maintaining the process, rather doing the actual work. So let's have a look how we see this today. Well, clearly manufacturing are the heroes of, of invention and innovation. Have a look at this number. 26% of total e economic growth and 12% of GDP is coming from manufacturing. Manufacturing is the value creation of, of, of economies, absolutely. And we see here, every dollar spent in manufacturing adds $1.48 to the economy. That is a huge multiplier. Without manufacturing industry, economies will, won't be able to survive. They're the engine. So there are a couple of challenges here. 70% of manufacturers said they have shortage in skills of, of workers. As I was saying before, due, the, due to the highly diversification of manufacturing, we have a big need for skilled workers. And 40%, 43% of manufacturers said they're satisfied with the return on investment. That's a terrible figure. Just 43%? 67% are unhappy with the return on investment of the innovation? Something's gone wrong here. They might miss the leading position. They might be challenged and threatened in the market. So technology is really critical here. The second highest priority for manufacturers in terms of technology innovation is mobility. So they understand I have highly skilled workers. I want them to be where they are. They need to have all the information at the right moment in time to do the best job they can, to take the right decision, to feed back information. That's what it is. And that's what all of us are talking here today. How can we help manufacturing 
to go to this enterprise mobility strategy. What do they need? Which elements do they need? How do I improve a process in manufacturing to make it faster, simpler, reduce the errors? 70% view mobile and wireless solutions as critical to converting people downtime in productive time. So you want the people to be really productive, down to administrative work. Do the job I, I pay you for and I'm training you for. So what are the solutions in these areas? So overall, what we are saying, Motorola Solutions and all our partners, Vision ID and Zebra and all the other partners out here, we're here to help our customers. Our technology solutions connect manufacturers with real-time business critical intelligence. We're making sure that this information that the worker needs, the knowledge worker or the line worker, he receives all the information he needs. Transforming data into business value information. Think about, think about the inventory. A truck is coming to a doctor of a factory unloading all the goods that are needed for production. You want to know what is in the truck and you want to know what is going into my inventory. So in former times, pen and paper, writing down the serial numbers, giving it to the back office and typing it into the system. And you, you will be amazed how many manufacturers still do it this way. Amazed how many still use pen and paper. Well, nowadays we do barcode, or maybe we do even RFID, and you can have a look a little later out there at, this, uh, um, at the demo area, how we do RFID. All of a sudden, we're capturing all this data immediately, and we will have real-time visibility because the minute we capture the data, it goes to the warehouse management system, and it's available. So I have real-time visibility. The trick is, this is just data, and data is more or less useless until you transform it into business valuable information. So you hear all the time big data and business analytics and these kind of things. That is really key. A data set doesn't mean anything, but if I know what my inventory is like, if I know what my production for today and tomorrow is like, and I know what my inventory is like, I know I'm in good shape, or I know I'm not in good shape. I don't have enough parts, I need to reorder. That is important. So all of a sudden mobility helps me. So there are a couple of areas we're, we're focusing on. Basically, I want to talk about three areas here. So what we're doing in plant, we're connecting operators, technicians, and machines with real-time intelligence so that they can do a better job. Lead manufacturing, that's what it is. And by the way, nowadays, if I'm talking to customers, lean manufacturing is everywhere. The new buzzword I hear is lean warehouse, likewise. And we'll talk about that in a minute as well. So it's all about cutting waste, improving quality, reducing production, uh, reducing transportation, waiting time, and so on and so on. Or in the warehouse, it's all about, um, as I was saying before, have the lean warehouse improve fulfillment, improve the accuracy of your warehouse. And by the way, this is just a sneak preview. On all of these major topics I have here, I have like, 50 more slides, which I won't share with you because then I would be overrunning big time. So if you're spe especially interested in one area, if you say, I want to learn more about warehousing or planned communication or service or things like that, or how IT can, can become better, come to us. Come to Motorola and come to our partners and let's talk together. Let's have this discussion. We can really go in depth here. And then thirdly, I was saying this already before, in the field, service, whether it is delivery, whether it is sales, whether it is service. It is really important that the employees dealing with your customers have all the information. Who is my customer? Is he a good customer? What is he ordering? Do you have any problems? Is he paying his bills regularly? Um, and if you can automate that, and if you can automate the entire process, you give more time to the workers, to your employees, to spend time with their customers. Additional time with the customer means you get more information, you do more upselling, you do better job and service level agreements, and so on. So many if you're implementing this mobility strategy, so manufacturers can keep doing what will always set them apart. It is being more efficient, that's what it is. More efficient means your bottom line, your financial line is better, your co company results are better, and you have an ability to grow. That's what we all want. We're measured by the stock market, by the industry, by our competitors, by our ability to grow. 
What are the solutions in these areas? So plants, warehouses in the field, I said that before. A production process is a very complex thing. Many things play together. So you have the, the inventory, you have the assembly line, you have the quality guys, you have the control room, the SCADA, you have the security guide, guide, guys, and so on and so on. If you really want to have a, a, a lean manufacturing process, all of these pieces need to play together. If you're, production, if you're producing bad quality, you want to know in time. So the quality inspection needs to report back that certain parts are out of tolerance. Maybe a machine is decalibrated and you, you need to react. You want to know that immediately. Because if you're producing wrong things, that is costly in terms of material, in terms of time, in terms of delivery, and so on. 54% of manufacturers say that they lack a unified view of their entire production. They know bits and pieces, but they don't have the overall view. They don't have a means to communicate with each other, to share data moved into information with each other, to be able to react, to respond immediately. You want to be really at the, at the, at the spot of the problem, of the production. That's what's key. And 40%, 40% of annual profits can be lost to unplanned downtime. Unplanned downtime is the least thing you want. Whatever the reason is, maybe you're, you're running out of inventory, so your production line is down, which means you need to reorder stuff. And maybe Matt Parker will talk about that a little later in his speech. We discussed that last night over a beer in the bar. Or maybe the machine is broken and you don't have service technicians who can do the asset maintenance in your factory in real time. Maybe you don't have the monitoring tools, the machine-to-machine -machine communication, to predict that a machine is running hot and a service engineer needs to go there. You want to have this view. The solutions to support that are manifold. So you want to you gain, or you can gain, 42, 42 minutes um, productivity per employee if you enable them using the right technologies. And you can reduce the unplanned downtime by 27% if you implement the proper processes with the right technology and the right connectivity, the right inter interaction with, the, with your staff. So it's all about plant communications, making sure the staff on the plant floor is able to communicate to each other. It's all about knowing about my assets. Where are my assets? How are they doing? How are machine, my machines doing, my tools, my buildings, my vehicles, my forklifts, you name it. How are they? Are they in good shape? Is there a maintenance coming up next week? And so on and so on. Inventory materials management. This is really the, the, the most important one. This is the heart of a manufacturing plant. You need to have a network infrastructure. You need to have a wireless network communication so that everybody in your plant and outside can communicate. But it needs to be industrial wireless. It doesn't make sense if you go next door to Saturn or whatever electronic shop and buy a couple of access points. They won't survive in a harsh environment. You need to have an environment that is also working at peak times, at high performance. You want to check quality and you want to trace the quality big time. And of course, safety and environmental plays a big role. And in certain industries like food and beverage, regulatory compliance is really important as well. And all of that can be handled with mobi mobile solutions, running on mobile computers, with the software of our partners, with the integration services of our partners. So there are various different products, whether it is radio technology, industry, wireless, scanners, tablets. And I just want to show you one little thing here, because it's, it's rather new. This one. It's called Smart Batch 1. This is a badge. I could wear it like this. It, shows my, it will show my picture and my employee ID and maybe a barcode on there and so on. It operates with e-ink like a Kindle, so it's extremely long battery life, and it communicates via wireless LAN. So if I turn it around, it's a different kind of device. It has a scanner inbuilt. So if there's something going wrong in production, I can scan a barcode and I can look the problem up or I can receive any kind of information related to this product. It is also a task management system. My job and uh, my boss will send me certain tasks to complete which I receive on this device and then I can respond yes I can fix this problem I go there and help or I bring something new or I support certain certain people or I even can have communication so this can be a communication device 
communication via voice over IP. So all of a sudden, I have a very small, pretty cheap device for every employee being able to communicate with everybody, to check certain information, to respond to tasks, and to complete things. If you want to touch it, see it, it's outside in the showroom, just various of our partners and ourselves, we have it. Have a look at that. So what about the warehouse? As I was saying before, the better your visibility about your inventory levels are in your warehouse, the better can, you can plan your production, the better you can fulfill the, the, the orders you have. And you want to turn inventory into revenue. And you want to have an optimized inventory, obviously. If your inventory is too big, that means you need to pay for the goods in, in your warehouse, you need to pay for the floor space, and you need to pay for the workers, and maybe even a couple of forklifts and tools and things like that. You want to you want to be able to have the right size of your inventory to optimize it. As I said before, lean warehousing, that is really key. You can save a lot. Let's have a look what you can save. So there's a high correlation between profitability and inventory turns. What a stunning number. And still, 10% of the inventory value is typically the cost of carrying the inventory. That is quite some money. If you can bring that number down, that is significant savings. That is a significant performance improvement. That is business agility in the market, being able to change your products, to have the innovation cycles of your products, to be better than the other ones. So, yes. <laughs> right. So if you manage to, to reduce your inventory by 25% in one year, the cash flow will improve by 50% within two years. If, you, if you're trying to sell to a manufacturer and you go and talk to the CFO and you come with these numbers and you talk about return on investment and total cost of ownership as well when doing the investment, he'll get him, you'll get him. He'll, be, he'll have an open ear for you. And all of a sudden you start talking the entire process. You start talking the strategy. You're not starting to talk the functions and features of a product. You have a 2.7 gigahertz coffee cup, which can rotate left, left, left or right. That doesn't interest anymore. It is the added value that you're bringing. And if you do it using the right technology, your shipment accuracy goes up to a really high level. And that is what you need, 99.6%. In some warehouses, we're even talking 99.9% .9 if you do voice picking and things like that, or pick by light or, or different things. So the solutions in the warehouse. So it's all the inbound management, really knowing, capturing all the goods coming into your inventory and moving them immediately into your warehouse management system. You really want to make sure what is in your warehouse management system is in the warehouse. That is critical. And what is in the warehouse needs to be in the warehouse management system. If, you have, if you're not capturing the information right at the very, point, very starting point, you may put, yes, you may lose goods. You don't know where they are, what they are, what they're doing. That is, that is dramatic. All the storage is important. Picking. Usually picking stands for 70% of the operational cost of a warehouse. That's why usually um, we have the highest level of automation in warehousing, in, in, in picking and commissioning, using mobile computers, maybe wearable computers, wearing on your arm or your wristband, having a ring scanner on a finger, maybe being voice directed, having a headset directing you, go to storage location 25, pick three items, you scan it, and it says, yes, right, check, and you put the three items on your palette, and off you go to the next one. This improves the accuracy. Your hands free and your eyes free. You can concentrate on the work. That's how you do 99.6%. Output handling, staff communication, similar to the, to, the, to the plant and the shop floor as well, and the infrastructure management. You see, lots of different pro dedicated products here, whether it's a forklift terminal or whether it is a mobile computer, highly ruggedized with long run scanners or other ones, or whether it is a hands-free computer, as I was saying before, or again, the smart batch enabling you to do 
to checking the, the, the performance of your, of your staff, communicating the tasks, giving them new orders and things like that. So it's all about streamlining the process in the, in the warehouse. It's all about enhancing flexibility. You want to make sure you have a process in, plan, in place and the tools to react to urgencies. Maybe one of your platinum customers is calling you and said, I need a delivery tonight. You need to be able to say, okay, there are a couple of workers, you, you, and you, you stop what you're doing right now, you've got a new task, we've got a platinum order from a customer, we need to fulfill now. If you have communication, if you have workforce management, if you have the tools in place, if your warehouse management system is up to date and you have the real-time visibility, you can react to that. And this will be an additional benefit for you. The strategy of many, many, of many manufacturers these days is you want to move away from viewing a warehouse as cost into an opportunity to do better in the market into a competitive advantage. That's the ultimate goal, and that is achievable. And then finally, talking about service. Really want to make sure that your service people maintain the relationship to your customers. This is a trend we see in manufacturing as well. A couple of years ago, manufacturers were outsourcing all their service to third-party service providers. Seen that? What we see now, this trend is coming back because manufacturers want to keep the relationship with the customers. The customer's buying once, or maybe twice, that's when he's seeing a, sal seeing a sales rep. But the service is ongoing forever. So these guys have a relationship with the customer. You really want to, want to benefit from that. You want to capitalize on that. But that only works if these guys are really efficient, if they have the right tools in place, if they have all the information. Before I enter the office of my customer, I want to see who is he? What is his history? Any challenge that's open, any new orders coming in, whatever you need to know, you want to be informed about your customer. Fifty to seventy percent of potential service revenue is lost because you're not able to have this information, because your processes are weak, because you're not integrated into the system, because you cannot capture data from your customer and send it back immediately to your company. Average revenue lost each year by consumer packaged goods companies due to the out-of-stock conditions in their retail shelf. This is another one. If you're not able to understand what your end customer needs, if you're not able to deliver, if your supply chain, and I'm talking supply chain all the time now, we're talking suppliers going to the manufacturer, going to the distribution center, going to the warehouse or dis distribution center slash warehouse to the retailer. If you don't have this visibility, you're failing. Twenty percent improvement in service level agreement fulfillment. Twenty percent more time for your workers, for your s field sales reps, for your service engineers to spend with your customer or to do additional jobs. That is efficiency. That helps you a lot. Two times more spent merchandising in stores by efficient technology equipped DSD. DSD is direct store delivery. You're delivering your products each and every morning fresh to the end customer or to the store, based on his order yesterday or the day before. And again, with all the information you have, you deliver the right product at the right point in time, and immediately you take a, take a new order. And this new order goes back to your factory, and you, the factory knows what to produce. They have the real-time visibility about their inventory. They know they can produce because the inventory is at the right level or not. So they, they can react. You see, it's, it's all coming together. It's a big, big, big network of information. If you're still pen and paper, if you're not communicating to each other, if you're not sharing, you won't be able to achieve. And if there is another crisis, like 2009, remember the first slide, the collapse of manufacturing, you'll be one of those who's gone out of business because you're not ready to adopt these changes. The solutions are all around field sales and pre-sales. Direct store delivery, I said before, field service, really, really huge, huge these days. Fleet management as well. Where are my trucks? How are they operating? What is my fuel consumption? How are the brakes doing? What are the tires and so on? How is my driver driving? Driver behavior is becoming more and more interesting to service companies. Some insurance companies give you 
bonuses if you can monitor the driver behavior. And if you figure out there's a guy who's driving like, uh, forgive me, Sebastian Vettel, speeding and braking, speeding and braking all the time, um, you may want to have a discussion with him. Say, my dear friend, we love your driving skills, but can you be more conservative in driving? Can you try to serve, save fuel and 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 end? If you're operating a fleet of 100 trucks or 500 trucks, saving 5% of fuel is massive. And there are lots of tools and solutions with our partners. So as I was saying, this is a sneak preview and lots of, lots of different things. If you want to specialize on some things, come to me later today. I'm going to be here all the time. My colleagues are here on our booth and all our partners as well. And then, of course, device and assets management. So three major areas, plant, warehouse, and service are the key areas. So these solutions are helping manufacturers to be best in the moments that matter. So they create the intelligent production, the industry 4.0, I'm sorry, I want to go back, sorry. Achieve more flawless fulfillment in the warehouse and deliver more dynamic servers, service. Which means in the end, and that is my closing slide, build efficiencies and grow the economies. Thank you. <laughs>